Hi folks, Clef here with a brief video uh, in answer to a question that came up today on the Moto user forums from Pete from the Netherlands, who is asking why he's getting pinching uh, that you can see here on his polygons. Now Pete's creating a low poly model for use in UDK. And what we're seeing here as a shading problem is due to the fact that inside the arch of his entryway, there are a whole bunch of polygons we can see here. And they all meet at the uh, front facing polygon here. So this polygon is an n-gon that has a whole bunch of vertices uh, along this edge. And sometimes with n-gons in Moto, you will get these kind of uh, shading effects that uh, Pete is describing as the pinching here. And often that will be seen on things like reflections. So you generally want to avoid uh, n-gons in, in some circumstances. Sometimes n-gons can be okay if it's, if it's on a flat area, uh, but sometimes you can have these kind of uh, shading artifacts. So generally it's best to keep a, a quad-based workflow. Now down here we can see the type of structure, uh, the level design that Pete is working towards, which is this kind of ring uh, with a series of passages at intervals throughout it. So I just wanted to uh, briefly show one approach for modeling this kind of shape uh, in Moto. Now obviously there's many ways to skin a cat in Moto and many different ways to, to do a, a given mesh. So I'm not saying this is the best way, it's just a way. Um, but what I wanted to also demonstrate is the use of sub D to help leverage also the creation of a low poly. So all I've done here is uh, selected a box and dragged out a rectangle, roughly the, the shape I would want for my wall in which there will be a passage. And I'm going to make uh, five segments along the X this way and four segments in Y, space to drop the tool. And I'm just gonna center it on all axes. So there we go. Now, right now, this is a non sub D. If I hit tab, it'll go into Moto sub D. And I can tell I'm in Moto sub D because in polygon selection mode, when I hover over a polygon, you can see it looks like this uh, sort of purple shading we have for the polygons. If I hit tab to exit sub D, you can see it's got a bluish kind of tinge to it. And if I hit shift tab, we go into Pixar sub D, and now I get a yellow highlighting on a, the polygons that I hover over. So I know that I am in Pixar sub D, even so the corners here you'll note are still sharp. And that's because uh, Pixar sub D interprets its, uh, its weighting a little bit differently than Moto's normal sub D. And uh, we're gonna use that to our advantage here. So I'm just gonna select these middle nine polygons and hit delete. And as you can see, we get this nice curving uh, corner here. So it gives us kind of an arch type of shape. Now we could we could reshape this arch. Um, we could add some spans in here to you know to affect this corner shape. Uh, we could stretch it. We could make it more arch, more rounded on top. But this is roughly the shape that uh, I want in this case. Now the next thing I'm going to do is going to seem strange, um, but it'll make sense in a moment. Which is I'm going to double click on an edge to select the entire edge. And now I'm gonna go into vertex uh, map menu and select weight tool and crank up the weight. So what this has done is this has added weighting to these edges. Um, so what we're gonna do now is I'm just hitting space to drop that and we've got no thickness at all. To, it's just a single, um, a, this mesh is only a, a single polygon thick. So we want to add some thickness. So what I'm going to do is go over here to duplicate and say mirror. And I'm going to click out here to mirror it. You can see there's one side, there's the other side. I can move my mirror to decide how uh, wide or I want that passageway, how thick basically I want the wall to be. So I think that's pretty good. And now what I'm going to do is select the edges again, select the edges on my back polygon, and then for I'm going to edge 
bridge and bridge between the two. Now, because I weighted my edges beforehand, that's why we're getting this sharp crease traveling all around here. So that's already done for us. So I just have to select a few more um, polygons. I'm going to go into uh, X symmetry just to speed things up a little bit. Select these polygon edges and then I'll add vertex map and again weight tool, crank the weight up. Space to drop the tool, click to drop my edge selection and as you can see now we've got a nice sharp edged arch but it's smooth still on the inside because I never selected these edges on the inside. They are not creased or weighted. If we look at this in uh, reflection shading mode, we can see as the reflection travels across the corners up here, there's no pinching, there's no artifacts. Uh, Pixar Sub D does a really good job of handling things this way. So this will render uh, very nicely in Moto. And what we have is a subdivision uh, model, surface model, uh, that we can render in Moto and that has very few polygons. So as you can see, using Pixar subdivision surfaces can be very efficient. Now, some people will, um, will bring up the fact that, you know, this is only really valid if you're rendering in Moto, and that's true. Uh, some packages cannot handle this. I believe Maya and Moto are the only two right now that fully implement uh, Pixar subdivision weighting. But if you know that you're modeling to uh, render something in Moto, then this is a perfectly, I feel, legitimate way to model and to uh, reduce the geometry that you have to deal with. What Pete wanted to do, though, is to have a low poly version of his model to use in a real time game engine. So let's do that now. I'm just going to name this mesh, um, I'll call it Arch uh, P sub. Then I'm going to right click on it, duplicate it. I'll hide the P sub one, and this one is going to be Arch Low Poly. Okay, now to turn this into low poly, we're being helped a little bit because this curve here that we're getting uh, is being generated by the sub D. And so I want to freeze it. And the way I can do that is to go up here and to go geometry and then to freeze command. Make sure that tessellation is selected. And when I say OK, it's going to, to freeze that. Uh, so you can see if you look here, it's, it's a little bit faceted as it travels around here. And the amount of uh, subdivision that's going to happen is dependent on the Catmull Clark subdivision level that was set for the mesh. So let me just, uh, I'm just going to um, undo that. And down here, if I was to set the Catmull Clark subdivision to something like four, and let's freeze again just to see what happens. So geometry, freeze, go. And you can see, ah, it's much more subdivided. There's a lot more, um, a, a lot more edges along this curve. So if you wanted something smoother, you have the capability to do that. I'm gonna undo this, because I don't want it uh, that many. I want it lower uh, poly than that. So I'm going to go back to a subdivision level of two, freeze, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with that actually. Now what we're going to do is uh, reduce the number of um, edges that we are dealing with. So let's double click a couple of edges, shift right to step, expand backspace to get rid of those. I don't need this or this. Shift right arrow, backspace, get rid of that. Again, we don't need these. Backspace, get rid of those. Uh, I'm just gonna hide, hit O for options and hide the work plane in the grid for a minute just so it's a little more visible, clearly visible what we're doing. Uh, okay. All right, so that's uh, cleaned up a lot. Um, but what I'm going to do is come to the right side, select all these vertices, and just delete them. We'll just deal with just this front face to simplify things. Now, we could have gone with 
what we had before. But one of the problems is going to be that uh, if we want to really keep our scene low poly, if we were doing one arch after another, it wouldn't really matter very much. But since in Pete's model, he had a series of blank walls in between the, the passageways, we probably want to alter the edge flow to bring these, uh, these loops up over the top and keep them, keep them contained within the single arch uh, block. So that way we only have a single edge down this side and, and it can simplify the rest of our geometry and reduce the number of polygons we have in the scene. Okay, so to do that, I'm just gonna, I need to um, spin these edges up to the top. So I need to create some more uh, points up there for them to connect to. So I'm just gonna select this top edge, say add a point, point. we'll add one like there, and then uh, we'll add a point like there. So I can grab this edge, spin it, Till it goes where I want. Grab this edge, spin it till it goes where I want. Um, grab this edge, spin it till the top corner, and finally grab this edge and delete it. Now we may have some spurious vertices uh, left down this side. Let me just see if we've got, yeah, we've got some extra edges, you know, points left over, so we'll just delete those. Um, don't know if we have any at the bottom here, no. Okay, so we can now check by coming over here into lists and coming down to polygons uh, by vertex and looking down here and seeing, do we have any polygons that have greater than uh, four vertices or less than four vertices? We do not, they're all zero, we have just 21 uh, quad polygons. So all of our polygons have just four vertices. Uh, so that is a good thing. Now I'm not liking, I just noticed uh, my symmetry didn't carry over on this side. Eh, that's good. Okay, so there we've uh, simplified things and we've got all of our flow now going up and over the top of the structure and we just have a single edge out here which will uh, allow us to reduce the number of polygons we use. Okay so now we need to add thickness back into our low poly model. Okay so before we go to the next step I'm just going to do a geometry mesh cleanup, remove anything we don't need, that is better. So let's uh, duplicate this. Using mirror again, we still got our, we should still have our values from last time. So it will be the same thickness as our sub D. We can grab this edge, uh, grab the edge around our back one. And just like we did with the sub D, we can bridge it. Done. Okay. So now we have our low poly version, and there's only one polygon out on the sides that will connect to the walls. Obviously, we could delete these polygons underneath. If you're going to a game engine, they probably won't be uh, won't be seen. So now we've got our uh, sub D version, and we also have our low poly version. Okay. So let's just take this uh, one step further. Now, before we go on, I've realized that we could we could reduce uh, our uh, polys even a little bit further here to something like so. Okay, so now we've got our low poly even more low poly. And now what we'll do is uh, right click on it, select duplicate, and I'll change this to walls. We'll hide the low poly arch. And what we're gonna do is select this, the polygon on each side, invert the selection and delete. And then I'm just gonna take each of these polygons and in polygon 
bridge bridge them and we get this nice um, box wall shape which has got the same dimensions as the archway passage and it's open at both ends which will be good space to drop the tool okay I'm gonna go to top view and now just to create that ring structure uh, there's a few different ways that it could be done but I'm gonna do a very quick and dirty way here using a uh, radial array okay and we'll just stretch that on out like so. So that's pretty good. I've, if we wanted to be, have a much bigger structure, you could expand it and then use uh, increase the number, the count, to have a lot more walls. But we'll just go with uh, 24 and uh, decrease the size until it's, you know, um, roughly starting to overlap a little bit like so. Good enough. And now we're gonna just do a vertex merge and we'll merge it till it all snaps together. I'm gonna run a mesh cleanup to make sure there's nothing hanging around. Okay, so we've got now our ring. So if we look at our low poly arch, this is where it would fit into the ring. And what we would probably do at this point is um, go into the low poly arch and also do the same uh, radial array so that it, the arches would match the position of all these blocks. And then you just delete the arches wherever you don't want them and leave them so you can place them uh, place them in at whatever spot you want. We'll just for now uh, place this one arch into the ring. So I want the arch to go in here. So I'll delete that part of the ring. Go to the low poly arch, copy it, paste it into the um, into the ring. And now I'm just going to hide the uh, ring structure for a moment so I can select each of the end polygons and delete them so that the arch is now open on both ends just like the walls of the ring are. I'll unhide the ring and now all we have to do is again a vertex merge and as a starting point I'm guessing about 20 millimeters is probably uh, where we want to start with that. Um, that there it's going a little bit off. Ah. Seems to be the sweet spots about there. Okie dokie. So let's just take a look, make sure everything's fine. It looks pretty good. It's good on the inside. Yeah, I think the I think that merge worked out okay. So all one big welded together structure. And now we've got a low poly um ring with the passageway in it. Now, if it's going into a game engine, you probably don't need these uh, polygons on the bottom. They probably won't be shown. So we could just uh, quickly remove those, delete those, reduce our poly count even a little further. So now we have 116 total polygons for this passageway and ring structure. So I hope that you found that helpful and thank you for watching.